The main motivator too is like, we want to, me and Keith want to have like a nice nest egg for like our future children and I want to be able to take care of my mom and going to WWE would allow me to do that. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Out of Character. I'm your host, Ryan Satin, and today we are joined by Mia Yim, aka Michin, did I say that right? Yeah, you Okay, did. good, just making sure. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? I am doing fantastic. I'm a little tired, I'm not used to doing these interviews early. Yeah, same. <laughs> and I'm still on LA time, which also throws Ooh, me off. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I'm still way early for me. <laughs> this is not a, we're not, we're both not morning people. No, definitely not, but we'll make it work yeah. here. Uh, let's start this interview off with what I ask everybody mm -hmm. at the start of these interviews, and that's how much of your real true self is there in the character that you play on TV? I'd say about, 80, 85%. Um, I'm truly an introvert, a homebody, so like that leftover is like, I just I just wanna be in a cocoon and like hide away. But most of the time, like, especially with the boys, that's that's just me. So you not you don't like going out? Oh no. I mean unless it's for food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very food motivated. <laughs> but <laughs> but if it's not for food or a movie, like I, you'll never see me out. I feel like that's one of the like best parts of being married. It's great. It's like you're like, oh, I have someone I enjoy being uh, around. I don't have to go out. I can just yeah. we can just sit here and watch our shows, play video games, whatever. He's the same way too. So it's like, you want to do date nights? Like, yeah. What do you want to do? Oh, let's play Valheim. Okay. <laughs> that's an amazing date. Night. Isn't it? You guys play video games for your date nights? It's great. That's so sick. <laughs> That's so sick. My office is upstairs. He's downstairs. So we got a little bit of separation, but we're on Discord. It's Love it. That's amazing. Love it. <laughs> My wife, she's not great at video games. She tries her best. At least she tries. She tries. At least she tries. She tries. So I try, I try to give her the old school video games because mm -hmm. those are a little easier. Yeah. She can't handle yeah. the like inverted nature of it. Like she's like yeah. walking around like, like <laughs> looking up here and I'm like, no, 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 bring it down. Aww. I can't see what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe, besides introvert, uh, how would you describe your off screen personality? Um, definitely like loyal. Um, passionate, emotional, but very like, that's all behind the wall. So I have a very thick wall where I keep people like, if I don't trust you, you're on the other side of the wall. And I'll give you a little bits and pieces of me, but be, be like this. But once you get past that, like I'm a whole different, like I'm just, I'm an emotional being. Um, so it's, it's a, um, I'm very open and vulnerable. Unfortunately. Well, without prying too much, like, where do you think that wall came from? <laughs> Life. Life. Like, were you always like that, or did you kind of build that up? No, I think it was when I started wrestling. I was very um, naive. Like, I didn't understand what the wrestling world entails. Um, so, after a couple years of experiencing some things and um, being around and seeing things the wall started to go up and then it wasn't until I had experienced my own hardships during that where it's like, okay, so I, everyone is not my friend. Um, people are, there are people that want to see me fail and do what they can to make me fail or make things harder for me. So I got to be very selective on who I let in my life as someone I consider like a friend or um, get behind that wall. So it was just a lot of realization of just how um, the wrestling, like the wrestling world can be beautiful, but it can be very ugly. And you know, a lot of friends, they say they want to see you succeed, but they will stab you in the back and step on you if they could get what you have. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, I think that <clears throat> when you're in a business like wrestling where it is a singular thing to a certain degree yeah. that it's, it's that's just gonna happen all the time. Yeah, it's not and, like a team effort, right? But well, I mean, it is, but you all the, even in that team, you want to succeed right. above the other one. And that's the mindset of it too. Where like in college, I played volleyball, and it was a team thing. So coming into wrestling, that was my mindset. Like we got to work together so everybody can eat. So let's like this. Still to this day, it's still a team thing, but. There are people that um, like I have issues with that I will wrestle, like we'll wrestle in the ring and then we'll go about and do our own thing. But it's like, my life is in your hands and your life is in my hands. We gotta work together. Yeah. Um, and if I can't trust you with my life, I, I refuse to wrestle you. 
Um, so it's just the realization that, you know, my mindset is this is a team thing, but there's a lot of other people that's like, no, this is, this is a me thing. And it's like, okay, well, let's just navigate. And we can, we can work with people like that, but as long as we know where they stand, then we can, we can, we can react accordingly. Well, you know, just knowing your past on a different note, like it's been so cool as a, as an IE guy myself to see like you and Candice mm -hmm. now representing for the IE on WWE TV. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's like growing up, I, there wasn't a lot of um, like celebrities or people coming from like Fontana or anything like that. So it's like even listening to the Tupac song when he said Riverside, I'm like, that's close by me, like, okay. <laughs> so it's cool being able to like, when me and Candace first met in the independence and she told me where she's from, I was like, oh my God, there's another wrestler in this area, this is awesome. <laughs> so like, that's always been like our thing. So now to be able to do something together on, you know, the main roster TV and stuff is like, this is awesome. This is really, really awesome. Is there no one famous from like your high school or anything? Are you the most, are you like the most famous person from your high school? So I actually, tr like we moved out of California when I was, I was young, like 12 or 13. Okay. So I went to high school in Virginia, okay. but like in elementary school, I don't remember, I gotta like research, but there's nobody, nobody on the top of my head that I know that's like um, a celebrity from Fontana. Yeah. I. I've got Alex Morgan from my school, the, mm. the soccer player, mm -hmm. and then a few others. And I've been trying desperately for like a couple years now to get on the distinguished alumni oh, yeah. list oh, yeah. just by like pressuring them on social <laughs> yeah. media and it does not work at all. Like it sucks. Yeah, that sounds awful. <laughs> they need to put you on that list. You guys heard it here. I, I recently found on my high school's Wikipedia I'm on there. Okay, but like I know, but anyone can do that, exactly, and I promise I didn't do it because exactly. I know I've talked about this in the past. I'm a I'm a tweet. You let me know what your high school okay. is. I'm a tweet at them. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you first hear from WWE about a potential return? Uh, this was right when like my contract with Impact was coming up. Like I knew there was interest there, um, but I was still in that period. Like I was very very happy at Impact. Like still, I got nothing but positive things to say about them. But it was one of those, so many things happen in life where like real life and business were, there were so many changes in one year that it was like, okay, stay with Impact or try again in WWE to have a better outcome, to have a better um, narrative of you know the, and how it all went right and like my time in wwe was great like especially nxt the best and then um getting a taste of the main roster i wish i could have changed things i wish things would have been different and now it's like okay should i stay where i'm comfortable but my biggest thing is i never want to go on in life wondering like what if so it's like, if the opportunity is there, I have to, I have to do it um, just to see what could happen. Um, so it was a lot of mental challenges and a lot of talks with like my family, with Keith and like even Gail talking with her and like the main motivator too is like, we want to, me and Keith want to have like a nice nest egg for like our future children. And I want to be able to take care of my mom and going to WWE would allow me to do that um, easier and faster. Yep. Um, so it was kind of a more, a decision where I need to take care of everybody else. Like I, I need to do something for me mentally to know that, okay, if I could be myself, how far could I have gone in WWE to know how far I could have gone, but also to help you know, my family as well. Yep, yep, now, and that what if can eat at you. Oh my gosh, and that's something that I always try to avoid. Like, if there's something that I wanna do or try, at least try to see. You mentioned uh, life changes. Mm -hmm. What kind of life changes happened? So, <laughs> when we got released, uh, we had about two months until our wedding. So we got married, we bought a house, we moved um, from Florida to Texas, so like, all that within a year. That's a lot. Was a lot, but 
I'm kind of glad that the release happened when it did because then I could to fully focus on that because Keith um, immediately went to AEW. So I was like, focus on work. Like I will take care of everything at home while I'm trying to decide what I want to do with my career. I'm just going to stay at home and just take care of everything because if both of us is on the road doing stuff, nothing's going to get done. Um, so the timing wise of everything really did work out because instead of being sad and depressed about the release, I just kept busy and there was so much that needed to be done. So I didn't have time to just sit and cry or do whatever. So it was, it, it worked out. It worked out. Planning a wedding is definitely a good way of getting over something like that for sure. Oh my gosh. As stressful as it is. Yeah. Yeah. And we were already near like the end of the planning. So it's like, of course you're worried about, oh my gosh, like the cost, we got to cut stuff, but it's like, you know what? Let's just let's just keep everything and just enjoy it. It's wedding industry. <laughs> you guys suck. You guys oh, are awful. You're gosh. awful people because the amount that weddings cost is ridiculous. Unbelievable. Like I'm planning my wedding right now and we toured one place and they were trying to charge $200 for a chips and dip like pla like platter and I was like chips and dip don't cost $200 like yeah. You're planning a wedding right now? Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Because, yes, it's it's outrageous. Well, I should say my wife is doing most of the planning. I don't want to take the credit for it. Yeah, but still, it's stress on the both of you. Yeah. And yeah, they definitely gouge you for <sighs> drinks and foods and... <sighs> ridiculous. <laughs> so ridiculous. ridiculous. <laughs> what, okay, so when they reached out, you said you knew there was interest. Was there, did you know at the time that it was going to be with the OC or was it just interest in you coming back? I did not know at the time. It was with the OC. Um, when the Good Brothers, they left like a month yep. before I did. So it was very close in time. So I, I think at this point, the OC hasn't even, did they come back yet? It was like before they came back or right as they came okay. back. So I didn't know it was for that. Yep. Um, but I'm glad that it was. <laughs> were you cool with them in Impact? Yeah, like we we weren't tight. Um, it was a very much like, hey, how are you? Good. And then we had like a meet and greet together, which was um, <laughs> like, like I said, the Bullet Club to me is like the cool kids. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm doing a meet and greet with the cool kids. I'm very shy. So I'm just going to sit over here. And they were just like joking and laughing and doing whatever. And I'm just like, I don't want to be like that weird kid that's like, yeah, what you guys said type thing. Um, but they were always really, really cool. And um, I remember at Impact when they were in Dallas, I brought my dogs and my lady dog, Jolene, loved Doc, loved Gallows. And it was like, I would see her with him and I'm like, I have to go take her outside, but I don't want to like, I just see him petting her and I don't want to take her away. So I'm just going to watch. Like they were so, they were just, just seeing how they were and how they never treated me any differently or anything. Cause you can always tell like, we could work together in the future and they're nice, but it's like, yeah, but a year ago, like you didn't even say hello to me. Okay. But like, they were always super kind and super sweet. And like AJ, my experience with him was, him being mad on video games. So it's like, it's like, oh gosh, I don't know if he's gonna like me, I don't know. But like, to know that they wanted me to be a part of them, their group was really, really flattering. You got that up, up, down, down heat between the two of oh you. Oh my gosh, when it was AJ and Breeze and I was anti, still anti Breeze, he's a loser. And I mean that with the kindness of my heart. He just needs to know that losing is okay. Real champ. But, um, so it was AJ and Breeze, and I was, I was team AJ, because I just wanted Breeze to lose that belt so bad. And then AJ lost, and he got so mad, he didn't even, he just, like, turned the computer off. And I was like, ooh, he's mad. He's mad. It's always awkward when you're playing video games with someone that reacts that way. <laughs> oh, my gosh, because even, like, I think it was me and the BRE, and then, of course, Breeze had the party, and like we knew how AJ was, but to see it in person where he just like, he loses, he stands up, throws his computer, and then his screen just goes dark. It's like, okay. <laughs> when we're playing fighting games, me and my wife, I definitely have to let her win. Sometimes don't 
share this clip with her people. <laughs> but sometimes, because I know if she loses too many in a row, she's gonna have a similar reaction of, she's an only child, so yeah. it's, it's gonna be like, nope, we're done with this, I'm not having fun. I hate fighting games so much. <laughs> Just like, I play with Shelton and he's always like, let's play Tekken, and this was when I, First, we were first getting close, and I was like, okay, let's play Tekken. Whoop me, like three times in a row, I was like, I'm never playing fighting games with you, ever. <laughs> this is awful. That's me in WWE 2K <sighs> with that, uh, with Cornell. Mm -hmm. He like, <laughs> I was talking so much crap on Twitter for like a <gasps> year waiting for the game to come out. To him, like, I'm gonna beat you, I'm gonna, when it comes out again, I'm gonna beat you. And then at WrestleMania, they were demoing the game, or they, yeah, they were demoing the game, and I saw like out of the corner of my eye him playing it, and I was like, oh no, he's so much better than me. Yeah. I'm not gonna even try. And that's the thing is like, like with Breeze, like they just talk so much <laughs> trash. And it's just, I'm, I'm getting to that point where I'm like starting to talk a little bit of trash, but I like being like the quiet one where I'm not a threat and just smash them all. <laughs> but it's the trash talking for me that I'm like, Unless we're in, in a Call of Duty lobby, where then I can really just be toxic. I'm like, I just, I'm gonna let you do all the talking because when I beat you, then you're gonna go silent. I was playing Call of Duty the other day and I did really bad in a game. And I don't <laughs> listen on the head, I don't, because it's at night and I'm like, whatever, I'm just gonna kill people. And then someone like sent me a message outside of the game like, you're trash, you're so bad, you ruined it for our team. <laughs> Ruined my night. I was like, oh, this kid oh my talking gosh. so much crap towards me. <laughs> this is awful. It's so bad, but it's so good. Like, Shelton and I will play Call of Duty together, and we'll be in a party. So it's just us talking. Oh, man. So we can't hear or yeah. talk to the other people, but, like, we're just talking trash. Not to each other, but, like, talking trash to the people, <laughs> but they can't hear us. And it's so bad, but I love it. <laughs> And I, I suck in Call of Duty too. I need like two or three games and then then I'm like good. But like the first couple times I'm just really quiet. But then when I start winning, me and Sheldon just start talking. It's like, ooh, if only you guys can hear us. <laughs> well, I didn't say I suck at Call of Duty. I just had one bad Call of Duty mm. round that day. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so when did you find out that you were gonna be paired with the OC? This was, let's see. Or how did that all come about? About a month after I signed, um, I got a call saying that they had the idea to bring me in with the OC to, to go with Judgment Day and Rhea. And of course, like because me and AJ only know each other from up, up, down, down, I was like, okay, but are the guys cool with it? And they're like, oh yeah, no, 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 they, they love the idea, they want you in, and I was like, really? So it was really cool that like when I was told to also know that the boys approved it as well and really wanted me in was very, very cool. And it's one of those things where like, I haven't told the boys yet, but being with them coming back into WWE after how I left, they helped me a lot with my confidence to kind of get back into the swing of things and for me to know who I am because they would say all the time like, yeah, you've been wrestling for a decade. Like you're good, you should know it. And so when we were doing live events and trying to get like, the, the swing of things together, like to get us to gel, they were just like, just remember who you are. Like, we we know who you are, like show everyone else. And it they really helped with my confidence and I needed it at the time. It's really easy to have like your confidence broken. Oh my gosh, that is a, that's a whole nother interview right there. <laughs> with your therapist. Man. Oh, my therapist <laughs> is great. Everyone, <laughs> my therapist has helped a lot, but yes, <laughs> ooh wee. Cause and I, I genuinely always believe that like even someone who has the most broken confidence, it really just takes like one or two people having confidence in, to mm -hmm. show them that they believe in them that like it helps a lot, you For know? For sure, and I've gotten really lucky where like my support system has been immense from my sister to and Keith to even Gail, like even after everything that happened before I went back to Impact, she's like, just know like you're good. This is not on you. So like Gail being supportive, the boys being supportive, like I've gotten so much support where it, like now I'm very hard on myself and I've always have been, but to know that people like Keith and Gail and, and AJ like really lift me up is like, you know what, maybe I do belong here, you know? So it does, it helps a lot. You said the OC is like the cool kids club. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, or the bullet club, I mean. Uh, since you're in the OC, does this mean you're technically part of bullet club? 
I mean, Jay White said that I was, so I'm just going to go off of him and say yes. <laughs> okay, good. good. <laughs> yeah, if he gives the stamp approval, exactly, I think you're good. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, so the name change stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. At first it appeared like you were changing your name. Mm -hmm. Now it kind of seems like it's more of a nickname. Mm -hmm. Which, is it kind of like a soft launch to a new name or is it a nickname? I, that's a great question because I don't know. <laughs> Was it initially supposed to be a name change? I think it was initially a nickname. Like, okay. I think the whole time I was told it was a nickname. And the biggest thing that I want everyone to know is, like, I'm okay with this name. Like, it's it's okay. If, if everything new, not everyone's going to like it. I get it. But, like, I'm okay with this name. Like, it's better than Reckoning. So I'm not going to complain about this name. <laughs> um, so, um... It's a nickname now, and who knows, maybe in the future it could transition to being my name, which if it is, I'm okay with that too. Um, I just want everyone to know, like, you don't have to set the building on fire, like, it's okay. And it's also a challenge for me to make it work. Um, it might not work now because for 12 years I've, I've been Mia Yim, um, so of course something different, something new, people's not gonna like is why are you changing something that's not broken it's like okay but this may be just just a challenge like let me let me see if I can get you to love me Chin just as much as you love me and Yim if if that were the case so um yeah I think it's, it's enough rambling and all in all I think it's a nickname for now okay <laughs> I if someone stops liking one of their favorite wrestlers just because they changed their name that's insane Listen, they'll, there's people that will stop liking me when I don't have blue hair anymore. So it's, I, I'm very much like, people is gonna like me or not like me, it's fine. It's everywhere, it's fine. Yeah, the internet can be out of control it sometimes. It is toxic, <laughs> and I'm spending less time on social media. Yeah. yeah, just for my mental health, and it's just like, the latest stuff that happened was so, it infuriated me. It was it was so like I understood where they were coming from, but the thing is, is like this is between me and my husband and like if everything is okay at home, then it's fine. But at the end of the day, it was like, you know what? I've been giving too much of my real life on social media and this like that was kind of like an eye opener. Like as much as I love being an open book, it's like I need to be more restrictive on what to show because I'm never gonna be perfect for them. And that's something I, you know, we were joking about therapy earlier, but like I'm in therapy, I have been and I love it. And that's just something that I come to realize that like maybe I just need to, I could still be that representation, that role model and still be there for the fans and things like that. But I gotta remember that they're not my friends and family. So, you know, keep, my personal real life to my friends and family and then I'll just put business stuff on social media. So I'm spending less time on social media to try to just focus more on real life and I, I Keith makes fun of me all the time like I have a social media addiction. I think a lot of us do. Um, so I'm just trying to work on separating that from my real life and also like it's, I always tell everybody social media is a privilege not a right. So. Totally. And I think that, you know, you said in the beginning, you, the person, has this wall up with people mm -hmm. that you have to let them pass. Mm -hmm. And I think that because we've grown up in a social media era, it's kind mm -hmm. of like been in our lives, yes. in, gotten more and more extreme since we've gotten older, but it's kind of been around since we were kids. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you have a career and, a, and you're a public facing person, you're like, well, I need to do this for work. I need to like engage with the audience, right. make them care about me more and stuff. And I think that we almost forget that like, we that well, those walls are important, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those things too, where like if you put too much out there, then a lot of people's gonna think that they have the right to know. Like with the whole thing with Keith and COVID, it was like, it's none of your business until he says like, until he says something about it. Don't come to me asking me for stuff because like that's his business and a lot of people's like that's mean when you say it's none of our business I'm like I'm sorry but it's not it's not like it's really not any of your business so whatever happens at home is none of your business but they feel like they have a right to know 
these things. And it's it sucks to tell them like, no, you really don't. Like, I'm it's sorry, because, but. and I've learned this just being more from my time when I was a reporter of like, I think that people want a narrative so badly, they want something to discuss so badly, they want to know all the ins and outs of everything so badly that they're willing to kind of just like ignore the fact that these are real people, that these oh are real gosh. things and that like these are real life circumstances. And I think even me, like when I was doing it, I got caught up in it. That's why I stopped being a reporter because I, was, yeah. I realized I was like, this is not what I want out of my life, yeah. you know? And I, but I think that it's become so normal in wrestling specifically and other mediums too, you know, other entertainment mediums as well. Mm -hmm. But the rumor mill is very extreme in mm -hmm. wrestling. And I think that people have gotten so used to that being the norm in wrestling that they just expect to be told everything. Of course. And then it's also like, I feel, uh, when was it? Like early 2000 when that big craze of like flavor of love and rock of love, like the reality show just went, oh my God, right? Like yeah, the best. So bad, but so good. Yeah. Um, like the reality TV era, I think a lot of them are getting the, the tea on social media now. And then when there's not an issue, they like to create an issue just for the drama of it. And it's like, okay, mm -hmm. like, okay, we, we, we have real lives here. And like, if I gain five pounds, all of a sudden I'm fat and I need to go work out and, and da, 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 and then it's like, can we just live our lives? <laughs> like we're doing what we can, we're doing the best that we can to entertain you and give you something. But like, that's why I would never do reality TV. I would never do like, uh, no, 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 no. Stay out of my house, please. No. <laughs> but they, yeah, they do. They, they, they definitely do that. And I can't even imagine to the level of which you guys get it. Like, oh I, my gosh. it's probably, I, especially as a woman, I can't even imagine. Ugh. I see the stuff my wife gets sent. I'm just like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's, you know what? Am I, let me see. You know what? <laughs> what, what we got in our DMs. Oh, yes. What? <laughs> I always clean it up like, nightly because I just there's so much stuff that I just don't want to see yeah I can imagine but of course there's always like please send me money I'm sorry please send me money yeah there's um you know pictures certain pictures they just de oh my, it's my that's what happened my wife and I'm always just like oh I can't believe they just like, willy-nilly send that like look just like missed calls. What? Like all these missed calls. What? Like, That's crazy. Yeah. Thankfully, nothing mean yet, but like when I deactivated my social media and then came back like a week later, the first um, DM I got was like, oh, look, the slut is back. And it's like, hmm, okay, well, I'm just going to block. You said before <laughs> when, we, when you first brought that topic up that you understand where some of them were coming from. No. No, don't give them that. <laughs> because what they were doing was insane behavior. You were doing something that is very normal with a friend. Like you weren't yeah. doing anything bad. I was, I was furious. So yeah, don't give <laughs> them, you. don't give them <laughs> that credit whatsoever. Uh, what's the most memorable time you hit your finishing move on someone and why? Hmm. I want to say, AK, Allison K at the May Young because I was from, I don't think I've ever done a, a eat defeat from the top rope and she was the first one and it was, it was really cool that it was with her, friend of me world tour, using Gail's mood, uh, move with Shelton in the crowd. It was, it's great for him to see me win and maybe, just maybe he could take notes and win a couple matches himself. <laughs> <laughs> he's been doing it for 20 years, so he's got, he's got to hurry up with he's that. He's got like a good five wins in 20 years. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Mia, thank you so much for doing this. Make sure you guys go follow Mia on social media. All right, that's it. I'm done officially tapping out for now. Until next time, I'm Ryan Satin, and this has been Out of Character.